Welcome back to the Robertson Media Center at UVA. We'll continue our instruction on Audacity by discussing the basics of recording with an external microphone. Again, this video series will not provide a lot of detail, so if you need more information, check out Audacity's tutorial site. We'll provide the link below. So today we're going to talk about the Blue Yeti USB desktop microphone. We have an example of it right here. Uh, you can get that from the checkout, the RMC. Um, it's perfect for voiceovers or podcasting. It has a number of modes, um, and it plugs directly into your computer through a USB port. So just make sure you have an adapter. If you don't have a USB port on your uh, Mac, for instance, you'll need your own adapter. Um, but it's really handy, pretty portable. As you saw, it's pretty small. Um, it's what I'm recording today with, but also what is available. Looks like this. Comes in two different colors. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is, oh, hey, it looks like I'm talking to the top. That's not the case. As you'll notice that I'm recording right now, I'm recording into what looks like the side. It's actually the front. So if you see the blue symbol right here, uh, that is what you talk towards, right, as it goes in there. On the front of it, you'll see a mute. Um, if it were muted, it would be flashing. Um, if it's not muted, it's in red. So I'll turn my microphone around so you can see real quick. So right now, it is not muted. Turn that back around, pardon the noise. Uh, so that's on the front. You also see a headphone volume. This is not the volume of the recording. It's really important to notice the difference. Um, this is for the headphone jack on the bottom, which I don't even recommend that you use because you want to be hearing what's coming in from your computer. So instead, you can just not worry about that one at all, but that's on the front. So that's what you talk into right here, not on top, but speaking directly in front. On the back side, you'll find gain and pattern. Gain is essentially turning up or down the volume. Um, it's boosting the signal or turning it back down as a little preamp in here. And so uh, this is one way you can record, uh, one way you can change your recording volume. Uh, another way is to uh, do it in the program. So you'll have to find kind of a balance between the two. If you turn this one up too high, it'll start being distorted. As you can see on mine, I'm less than halfway up. Uh, on this one, right, so this is all the way down, move it up. I wouldn't necessarily go beyond halfway uh, unless you're very, very quiet or you have to be further away from the microphone for some reason. So start with it at least somewhere between zero and halfway. Uh, you will also notice below that is a pattern. I have mine, both this one and this one are set to cardioid. It is the upside down heart shape. Um, and cardioid, the word just means heart shaped. Uh, there are four settings. Uh, I recommend this one for if you're doing a voiceover or a podcast because it's capturing the sound directly in front, right? In a heart shape, 3D, that kind of closes off the back. So it's actually kind of blocking a little bit of the sound that goes behind it, uh, which can be really helpful in a not exactly ideal recording situation like this office. For instance, I have glass walls over there that are probably bouncing back uh, quite a bit of my voice uh, and around the walls. And so it's nice to have kind of this uh, back area blocked off somewhat. And it's really best in terms of Frequency response and sounding the best if it's right in front of the microphone, not on top, not behind, not on the sides, but right in front. Uh, I'll also put up, as I'm talking, a, a chart that shows the different other settings that you can use, but I'm not going to go into those today because we don't have a lot of time. All right, so on this, you will see on the bottom, this is where you plug in your USB cord. Grab that now. USB goes into the bottom like this. Watch out because this can turn and bend and break your USB uh, cord very, very easily on that port. And the other end gets plugged directly into your computer. So this one's already set up, so we'll follow through with that. You'll notice this other thing I've got here. Uh, this is called a pop filter. Um, another version of that is also available for checkout. Make sure you check one of these out with your microphone. The USB, uh, Yeti USB mic windscreen. 
Now, windscreen, I'm not going to put it on here because it's going to be really loud. Uh, fits directly right on top, like a hat, right there. And that's going to prevent uh, wind sounds or the wind of your mouth, which is uh, uh, what the pop filter is also known for. Uh, if you'll notice that um, when you were trying to record, P's and S's uh, sound really loud and like actually distort in the microphone. So if I were to move this and I said, right, and if I back up just a little bit and I use a pop filter and I go, right, you can hear the difference. Um, it's cutting out some of the um, uh, breath that's coming out of your mouth on those particular ones and causing distortion in the microphone. So I recommend using a pop filter uh, if you're going to record with one of these mics and you're speaking directly into it, for instance. Um, so the other thing to think about is the distance that you are talking. You'll notice that I'm probably about six inches away, uh, and that's a good distance. You really don't have to talk directly into the microphone like that. Uh, you'll notice as I do that, you're going to get a lot of distortion and probably... Uh, so what I said there is you're going to get a lot of distortion uh, and you're going to be clipping. Uh, what clipping means is that it is too loud for your particular input microphone. Uh, so you don't want to do that because it's going to sound really bad and there's no way to fix it um, uh, in post. Let's return to Audacity now and set up our computer so that we can start recording with this microphone. Right next to this little uh, microphone symbol, you need to select which microphone you're going to record from. In this case, you can see that I am recording from the uh, MacBook Pro microphone. Now, the problem I have is that I've opened Audacity before plugging in my microphone. So I'm going to quit Audacity and open it back up. This is the most common problem, which is why I'm showing it to you. And you can see now, oh yeah, the Yeti stereo microphone has shown up under my microphone drop-down menu. And now that's set up. However, uh, I highly, highly recommend that um, you come over here to where it says speaker and you select wherever you want to actually play back your audio from. So that might be your external headphones, which is probably the most likely I would highly recommend that you listen on headphones. But if you're listening on the speakers, you can select your computer speakers. Um, or you can put it back through the stereo microphone and plug in there. I don't think that's a great idea. Uh, but I'm going to select this one because as I'm recording this, I want to record anything that's coming out of the program. So the first thing you want to do is to turn on monitoring. You will see uh, up along the top here, uh, you can see there's a phrase that says click to start monitoring. All you have to do is select it. Uh, if that doesn't show up there, you can also click the actual microphone button here. And let me stop monitoring for a moment. And you can select start monitoring. And that's a great way to make sure that your microphone is actually working. There we go. So you can see as I'm talking, the bars are changing. Um, and uh, as I say things, they bounce up. So that's good. It means my microphone is working. Uh, I would say that the microphone uh, recording volume is a little bit loud. You can see as I hit the peaks, they uh, can go above negative 6. Right here, you see there's a negative 6, negative 12, negative 18, and so on. A good maximum volume for a loud sound, such as my speaking, the peaks should hit somewhere in between negative 6 and negative 12. So I'm actually going to come over here below this this little uh, microphone symbol. There's another one and a slider bar. This is a recording volume. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And you can see now my peaks don't well, go a little further. Now my peaks shouldn't go beyond negative 6, which is great. So somewhere between negative 6 and negative 12, I'm being a little loud. Now, not all of your sounds are going to be that loud, so you need to choose uh, another kind of range. Uh, I would say for a quieter sound, something that you want heard but not necessarily be that loud, you can see that sometimes my voice is bouncing around negative 18. I would go negative 18 to negative 30 for something you want to be heard clearly, but not necessarily uh, something that's very loud. But you can always record it louder and then turn it down uh, in the program itself. And we've shown you how to do that with both the envelope tool and 
uh, with turning down the entire track. If you have something that's below negative 30, it may not be clearly heard, especially with people listening to it on uh, less expensive speakers or they're far away from the speakers. It becomes kind of muddled and mixed in with all the rest of it if it's below negative 30. But you may have reasons to have something that's really, um, you know, distant and, and, and uh, but just keep in mind that it's really hard to hear sometimes, especially on certain uh, devices. Clipping is when you hit the zero mark uh, on these um, levels. And that's really bad because the microphone itself can't actually pick up that noise. And so it becomes this level of distortion. And especially in the human voice, that distortion is bad. You can't get rid of it. You can always create it later. So you might as well record in an area where, you can't, where you're not actually clipping. You're not too loud for the microphone. So I'm going to give you an example of what it's like to be too loud for the microphone. So pardon the noise. So this is too loud for the microphone. And you can see that there's a, a big problem with this sound. So I'm going to stop that now because it's really unpleasant. Uh, but so you, you just need to think about trying to find exactly the right levels. One thing I'll caution you is to make sure you're paying attention to which levels you're turning up. Uh, remember that the little symbol is telling you which. So this is the, the input recording level. And this is the output. So this is what's going to your speakers. And this won't actually change anything while you're recording. It's just going to change how loud it is for your headphones or your speakers that are playing back. So make sure you're paying attention. Now, why do I want to turn things up so close and get so close to clipping and endanger my audio? Well, the problem is that if you see when I stop talking in just a moment, that there are still some registered noises. You see that? So it's popping in a little bit down by negative 54. And that's called the noise floor. And essentially, the microphone itself uh, has an electronic signal in there, and it's creating noise. Now, they try to make microphones have as little noise as possible. However, um, there's always going to be some level of noise. Now, if you record something really far away, uh, then the problem is that you're also uh, that, that you're getting closer to that noise floor, and if you turn up the a, like a quiet sound, you're also going to turn that noise floor up, and eventually you're going to hear it um, really loudly. Uh, so you want to be as far away from the noise floor as possible, but not clipping. So here's a test run for uh, hearing the difference between recording really loud and recording something that's really soft like this, and you can see that the uh, recording itself is really small and it's going to sound pretty bad because you can hear the noise floor versus as i come up closer you can see it's showing up a lot bigger a lot louder so i'm going to stop that well now let's look, let's record so if i hit the record button you can see now it's actually creating the waveforms uh, that means the microphone's working. It also means that since it's not peaking and it's not too small, that my uh, levels are correct. And I'm going to hit stop. That's great. Now, if I wanted to record again, I've mentioned this before, but might as well mention it again. If you tried to record like here and you want to record over the top, it's not going to work. So I'm going to hit that and you can see what happens. Oh, I'm recording over here now, and that's not the best. So if I hit stop, right, and I, then I'm going to have to actually move this to a new track and try and get it lined up. Instead, you want to record to a new track. So there's two ways, three ways to do that. Uh, you can go tracks, add new, and you can add a mono track. Or you can learn, uh, if you hover over the record button, there's a record new track, which is shift R. So you can hit shift R, and let's see what happens. And I'll talk. Waveforms. So I'm talking uh, that right means now. The microphone's at working. The same time it also means I'm talking. that it's not peaking. And I hit the space bar to stop. And you can see that now it's actually recording on top, and you can hear exactly what's uh, going on in the background as well. They're, they're playing at the same time. Another way you can do that, if you can't remember Shift R and you don't want to create a new track, you can go to Transport. Uh, and then you can go to recording and say record new track, which you can see right next to it says shift R. That's exactly what you're doing. You're going to transport, recording, record new track. Okay, now we're going to talk about some microphone troubleshooting. These microphones are quirky, like Audacity is also quirky. Uh, and so there are some things to pay attention to if the microphone isn't immediately working.
Number one, make sure to plug the microphone into the computer before opening Audacity. If you are plugging a mic in, just make sure to fully close the program by selecting Audacity and quit Audacity on a Mac, rather than just hitting the red X. On Windows, just make sure you go to File, Quit, and then we'll reopen the program. Aha! We have our Yeti stereo microphone. Two, if you're using the RMC iMax, don't plug the USB mics into the front USB port. I find that they often don't work when you do this. Uh, around the back side, you'll find another set of USB ports and use one of these. Three, ensure that the red mute button lights up on the desktop mic. If not, you may have a bad cable. Return it to the front desk and let them know. Four, when in doubt, always fully close the program and reinsert the USB plug, then reopen the program. You would be surprised how many times this fixes the problem every class. While we're discussing troubleshooting, I want to mention that you should save often. Audacity will crash from time to time. This is one of the downsides of using an open source software like this. Uh, fortunately, it's pretty reliable about getting some kind of recovery file. But label tracks, for instance, are currently a really good way of crashing the system. So don't use them. True to its open source roots, Audacity is quirky. If you want something more streamlined, you can get Adobe Audition, which is actually a much better program, but it's not free. You can use it on the GLab computers, or you can purchase it for your computer for a monthly price. I also want to mention while we're talking about troubleshooting, one of the most common situations uh, where students have trouble, and that's actually with the pause button. So if I hit play, waveforms, so I'm talking uh, that means right the now, and then I pause, you can see that these two are shaded out, and down at the bottom it says playing paused. This is a problem because if I go to, for instance, my time shift tool, I can't move anything. You see how there's a little like no symbol here, a little circle with a slash through it? You can't actually do any editing. You can't change anything in the envelope tool, and you won't know why. Well, that's because you're paused. You're going to have to actually hit stop, and you'll see now you can actually edit anything you want using any of those tools.